Hello, everybody. A very, very warm welcome back to News Talk. My name is Stephanie and I'm joined by David. Hi, David. Hi, Stephanie. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. We've got three really interesting stories for us to discuss today. Remember, this is such a great way to improve your vocabulary, improve your listening skills and just enjoy um, communicating using English. Shall yep. we find out what our topics are going to be, David? Yes, please. OK, so let's go into our topics today. Here we go. Right, so very three very different topics, as always. We're going to give you our thoughts, our opinions, and please join the chat and send us your thoughts, your comments, your answers. So the first one, the first question is, to which country is the president of Botswana threatening to send 20,000 elephants? Strange question, but strange topic, but really important one. This is a really fascinating one, isn't it? I mean, before I read the story, I was trying to guess where do I think they could be heading? Difficult to guess, um, but please do type in, let us know. We're looking for a country here. It's a very interesting story, number one. Story number two, we're moving over to America, um, California specifically, and we're asking about the minimum wage. So again, a really fundamental topic, this, thinking about how much workers are paid. Yeah, how much is the hourly rate? And of course, what we want to know is, what about in your countries? What's the minimum wage there for fast food workers or for workers in other jobs? And then we're going to end up talking, yeah, about more money, but a lot more money. A and lot, the question lot more is, money. <laughs> how much is the year's biggest lottery prize in the US? Amazing amounts of money. But again, what do you think about lottery? Do you play? Do you spend any money? What do you think is right? Those are the sorts of questions we'll be asking. And I think we should get our students to take a little bet, David. Do they think that we play the lottery? So we have the lottery in the UK. So perhaps an interesting thing. Do you think I play the lottery or do you think David plays the lottery? Perhaps we both do or perhaps neither of us. What do you think? You'll find out in story number three. So right. let's get started. Um, we're starting with elephants. Uh, what a fascinating story this is. Um, Elephants in Botswana, um, but the president of Botswana is threatening to send 20,000. So that's a, it's not a small number, is it? Um, where is he threatening to send them? Send them which, which, which country? And a clue, it's a European country. And of course, this whole topic is about conservation. Because, of course, in Europe, we are particularly concerned about protecting elephants from poaching. Of course, in the past, you know, this was a big, 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 big deal, big problem that uh, people would go hunting, yeah, and shoot elephants and take them uh, as the, the horns, the tusks as trophies. And of course, this caused a big problem with poachers and it decimated, didn't it? It really reduced the population of elephants. But well, in fact, I think that's a really, really good point to start with, David. I mean, I, I was reading some statistics and it's quite incredible. In 1930, which actually isn't that long ago, there were 10 million elephants in the wild. 10 million. Wow. Today, there are 415,000. Oh, I mean, that's, that, that's a that, huge, right. yeah, that's a huge yeah. drop, isn't it? It, it is. But then when you've got the other perspective of Botswana, for example, and I believe Botswana has about a third of the elephant population in the world. But the problem that they have, because the conservation efforts have been so good, is that they have too many elephants. So the elephants are causing damage to property and they're causing destruction to the crops. So Botswana don't want this many elephants, do they? And I think they've even sent 
uh, thousands of element elephants to neighboring countries. Absolutely. And it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because what to one person can be a really important, special um, prize creature to another country where perhaps there's too many of them, they're viewing them in a very, very different way. So again, interesting to know what you think about this topic. I can see Amelia's here. We've got Yusuf and Simon has joined. Um, so what do we think about this topic? Yeah, because I mean, you know, animal rights groups, they argue that hunting elephants is cruel and should be banned. Do you agree with that or do you have a different perspective? I mean, so I'm typing certainly... a question in the chat. Should hunting be banned? So we can have. A yeah. Um, so and then what countries do is that they. They ban the trade in hunting trophies, so there's no value in them. Um, so I think countries like Australia, France, Belgium have done that. But I think this is where this has come from, isn't it? I mean, this particular country that we will reveal in a moment um, has proposed stricter limits on importing hunting trophies, um, whereas on the other side, Botswana is saying we need to manage the population. Yeah, and thank you, KK. Yeah, Botswana, officially the Republic of Botswana, thank you very much, is a landlocked country in South Africa. Perfect. Um, so, yes, Amelia is saying hunting elephants must be prohibited. And again, remember, you know, everybody's viewpoint is welcome and valued. And we'd really like to know what you think about this. Yusuf is saying, I agree in that hunting is bad, especially for some animals. Yeah. Um, so, however, so the argument that Botswana has is, and this is, they are supported by neighbours, Zimbabwe and Namibia, is that they should be allowed to sell the ivory that they have from the elephants so that they can earn money from their large numbers of ele elephants. However, in contrast, countries in East Africa, as well as Animal Rights Group, oppose this, saying that if you do this, then what you will do is you will encourage lots more poachers, which was always the problem with elephants, wasn't it? And look at Simon's made a really good comment there, David. Um, in Simon's country, there are also some the same challenges. The elephants coming across from India, damaging crops, houses, and even in some circumstances, killing humans. And that again. So, who? How do we know what 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 is the best thing to do? And of course, Simon, you did absolutely have <clears throat> the correct answer. The, yes. the correct answer is Germany. So, because of the German position, uh, the president of Botswana has said, I will send you to your country 20,000 elephants and let them live in your country. And then you see how you manage with that many elephants. It's a powerful argument, isn't it? It is. It is. It's. It's sometimes very difficult, isn't it, to appreciate, you know, what's happening in other countries. You just get a, a an overview without knowing all the the details. Absolutely. I think it's a it's a classic example when you have to really put yourself in another person's shoes and imagine how you would feel if you were living in those situations where there were too many and they were posing a threat. What could realistically be done? Um, Yusuf, some good points there, Yusuf. In good countries, there are places for these animals. Hunters aren't allowed to enter because the government... Yeah, so again, coming back to that point of conservation. Yeah, yeah. I think it's getting the right right balance, isn't it, as with everything. Shall we have a look at the vocabulary? Let's have a look at the vocabulary here. So the question we asked was, to which country is the president sending the elephants? Um, and the answer is to Germany. Um, so Botswana's president is threatening to send the elephants to Germany. And we talked about, you know, the reason that the elephant population, there is this, this discussion is because the conservation efforts have been successful. And conservation means, of course, the protection of plants and animals and natural areas, especially from the damage that, that can be caused by 
by humans. Um, but but um, yes, Amelia, sorry, you are right. You are right. The animal was was there before us. So yeah. Absolutely. I think it comes down to that sort of trying to find a balance, doesn't it? And trying to, to keep everybody happy. And there must be some way, some way in the middle. Um, David used the word trophy a lot. Um, a trophy is something used as a symbol of success. Um, so if you win a competition, you make a trophy. It's often a cup, something like that. But of course, in hunting, a trophy can be things such as the ivory tusks of an elephant. And we also talked about poaching and poachers. So the verb is to poach and the person who does the poaching is a poacher. Um, and to poach is obviously to catch and kill animals without permission on somebody else's land. So it's an illegal activity. Absolutely. OK, moving on then to story number two. We're moving across from Africa. We're going to America and we're talking minimum wages this time. Uh, minimum wage for farm food workers, um, which has changed very recently. Yeah. Any ideas? What's, you know, how many dollars an hour is now the minimum wage? And this has affected something like half a million workers in California. And I think there's a lot of debate about now that they've had this increase, what about the possible repercussions for other workers in jobs that are not very well paid? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing for the economy? You know, who, there's always two sides to, to every story. Um, and again, isn't it, as you said, it's that sort of keeping everybody happy because yes the workers are happy with the increase but the, the employers are not so happy um they're saying it's actually a catch-22 um how can we how can we keep everybody happy in this situation um the cost of running businesses is increasing so if they're having to pay their employees more um they're then going to have to raise prices so actually is it a solution yeah, and apparently already what some employers are doing is then cutting the hours. And so the, the, the workers have to do more work in the same time uh, and effectively will earn the same money. Uh, they, you know, their workload will, will increase quite a lot. Um, so Amelia is guessing about five yeah. US dollars per hour. Any other guesses um, coming through? And anybody in your country, what's the minimum minimum wage? Because um, that was increases, hours, doesn't it? In April, I think it does. And hours in in this country, it depends on your age as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you are, you know, sixteen to eighteen, it's one, and then eighteen to twenty one, and if you are over twenty one, then it's it it is higher. Um, <coughs> And I think it's just it's increased this year um, by 10 percent. So it's gone up in the UK. I'm talking. Um, it's gone up. And every um, every April, there is a slight increment, a slight increase. Um, yeah. Simon, you might, to Simon's quite Simon's quite close, but it was. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's actually more than Simon is is saying now. And that's why it's. Uh, um, but it, it, of course, it's it's for many workers. This is very positive because they are living in 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 cities where it's very expensive to to live. Um, and what the argument is as well, because if you are respecting workers, then, you know, it improves the quality for everybody and other industries will also have to give better wages to their employees. Absolutely. And happy employees, happy work environment. People have a greater sense of loyalty to the company. Um, and I think it's sort of a, a win win all round, isn't it, David? I, I, I think it is. So, in, in fact, I'll tell you. So the, the, the minimum wage for fast food workers in California, and it is exceptional, has gone up to $20 an hour. But this only applies only applies to chains of fast food restaurants. So if you are employing more than 60 workers, so you may be having a number of outlets and in total you need a minimum of 60 workers, then you have to, to pay this minimum of $20. 20. 
um, but it is causing problems. I don't know what you think. Do you think that's that's good? Um, I think it's, it's very good, actually. I was quite surprised. Um, Absolutely. No, I think it's coming back to that sort of that idea about keeping your staff happy, rewarding loyalty, um, creating a happy working environment. People want to come to work. They feel that what they're doing is valued. Um, surely that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Amelia, you've got a, a, a point, you know, but I think it's it's everybody's responsibility to treat everybody with respect and and fairly, isn't it? Um, and this 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 whole point about this um, is because the the governors of California um, want to alleviate the, the pressure on poorer families who tend to be the ones who work in fast food industries. And I think that's that seems very logical and fair. And of course, it's that cost of living crisis, isn't it, that so many of us are facing where we're seeing these astronomical rises in the cost of basic things, um, food, heating, um, for example, that the costs really have increased such a lot. And so people who are in this sort of lower income bracket, of course, feeling it a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea, I think, again, was to target the franchises, you know, like the McDonald's and the burger, the big the big players but of course this will impact some smaller employers as as well but th did you did you know stephanie what the uh, test here what the minimum wage across america is i don't know david i'm going to turn <laughs> to everybody in the chat the minimum wage across america america yeah to give an idea and actually you won't be surprised but uh, this affects women uh two-thirds of women this affects and only one third of men because these are people who work in you know things like restaurants bars uh child care support preschool teachers hotel work these are these are the people who who really don't earn a lot of money an hour uh no i mean this the actual minimum wage in in dollars is seven seven dollars 25. i was going to guess maybe 11 or 12 seven yeah that's that's the the legal limit so it's only states like california which are very different so you know it's still a difficult life for a lot a lot of people absolutely and interesting how it depends state by state whereas in, in our country it's it's a national living wage it, it, Should we have a look it, it, at the vocabulary there, David? Okay, so the question we asked, what's the minimum wage for fast food workers? Um, and around half a million workers at California fast food chains have begun receiving £20. We said that's an increase. It's gone up from 16 to $20, sorry, um, $20 an hour, which is the minimum an wage starting yeah. this week. And, uh, $20 is like 20 euros, isn't it, something. Simon, that's fantastic uh, insight there. So Simon's saying in Bangladesh, um, you get – it's, it's very very low to, in comparison to other countries the minimum monthly minimum wage is about uh is that takas do you say twelve thousand five hundred, which is equivalent of about 113 us dollars wow thank you for sharing that um so what we would do it we we talked about and we mentioned you know like um mcdonald's or burger king these are chains and a chain is a group of shops or restaurants or hotels or other businesses that are owned by the same company um and did you notice david using the word franchise um always important to notice these words in context well a franchise well that's the right to sell a company's products in a particular area but you're using the company name so you might open a franchise store you're selling the products and you're using that company's name yeah and we did mention that you know the whole idea of this is to alleviate some of the difficulties for for poorer people in particular um, and if you alleviate something then you make it less bad or less severe 
Good. Let's move to our final slide. So we're talking money, but we've gone from one extreme to the other. We're talking about this year's biggest lottery prize in the US, of course. Um, anyone got any idea how much this is? It was just, uh, you know, these these numbers to me, you know, and especially after Simon said about, you know, what's happening in Bangladesh, is just very difficult to to comprehend. To get um, your head round, yeah, absolutely. And the thought of one person winning all that when it could be, if it was shared around, the difference it could make to so many people, I think that's kind of mind-blowing as well, isn't it? Yeah, and so what they have, and, and 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 again, please do tell us if you have lotteries in your country and how they operate. But the, in the in the United States, as I understand it, you've got the Powerball and you've got the Mega Millions. These are the two main lotteries, and you can win so much money because I think each day that there's no winner, then it accumulates. It gets bigger and rolls bigger. Over. bigger. Mm. Yeah, it rolls over. And I think it was like 40 days or something um, before the prize was won. And of course, the jackpot is just growing and growing, isn't it? It's becoming immense. <laughs> It is. So the system, because um, we in, in, in our country, um, and yet yeah, do we play it, is called, the, the, the main one is called the National Lottery, right? And you have to, you choose five numbers and then a, a sixth one, don't you? Is that right, Stephanie? <laughs> Well, I think we're revealing that David possibly doesn't play the lottery <laughs> with his lack of information as to how many numbers. I mean, some people do pick them, yes, but I think a lot of people just do. We can do what's called a lucky dip where the, the machine will pick them for you. Um, but certainly I think there seems to be this formula. I think you you basically you, you choose five five numbers that tend to be a two digits, right, more than ten like 22 and 24 and then you pick a a, a, a number six which can be from one bonus ball yeah a bonus bonus ball but i'm afraid i'm with you amelia it's just wasting money throwing throwing your money out of the wind <sighs> but but david well i actually do play the lottery I don't know if anybody guessed that. Yes, I do. I mean, I do limit myself. I just do the national lottery. I don't do it. I mean, I'm not, if I miss a week, it's not the end of the world. I don't have the same numbers, but it's a bit of fun. And if I strike it rich, if I win the jackpot, then fantastic. Um, so yes, I do play the national lottery. Good, good. Because actually, there are lots of positives, in, especially in our country, about people who play the lottery. I was going to because... say, it does support a lot of charities. The, the money that we pay, again, I'm talking about our country, and we really would like to know what happens in your countries. But the money that you play for the lottery tickets does go to supporting and do, doing a lot of good work in local areas. Um, so they support things like local sports centres, um, recreational things for underprivileged people so it does do the money does do a lot of good and yes Amelia fantastic to win <laughs> <laughs> but because there's something like four billion pounds every year are raised for these good causes so I think that's that's where where would the money come from otherwise the government wouldn't give it would they so most yeah. certainly not um yeah Simon says it's a popular business there you go Simon's with me on the lottery yes Simon um his number hasn't been announced yet well mine neither Simon I'm still waiting I'm still fingers crossed every Saturday <laughs> one day one day yeah fingers crossed you'll strike it rich but uh yeah I mean um I mean what fascinated me about the 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 chances of this because of I was course just if you gonna are, say that yeah. I'm not I'm not a mathematician, but the we call them the odds, yeah, you know, the chances of winning. Do you know? <laughs> yes, you do, Stephanie. What <laughs> I'm full of surprises, Amelia. I'm full of surprises. <laughs> <laughs> she is very practical, but that is practical. 
I think it's better in the in there are far more chances to win something on on the UK lottery than in the in in the United States because I mean, the, in our lottery we have lots and lots of smaller prizes yeah. and some very big prizes whereas in the United States it tends to be just one All or nothing. massive massive prize yeah. So I think also that's another point in, in the UK, you can win. So, for example, you might win 20 pounds or you might win 100 pounds. It doesn't have to be that that big all or nothing. So even if you match, if you find the same numbers, if you match two numbers, you might win, depending on how many people won the jackpot that week. Um, so there's always a chance. Oh, so what's the jockey club? Is that is, is that to do with horse racing? Um, uh, just if you can clarify that, KK Max. Um, but yeah, but the the odds of winning in the United States, and in a minute we will tell you how much these these people win. But the odds, did you did you find that one, Stephanie? I did. The, yes, but I'll let you reveal, David. Well, it's something like two hundred ninety two million to one yes have i frozen yeah so you have frozen there david but we can still hear you and yeah, i mean those those numbers those sort of statistics are astronomical but on the other hand if we're positive we're going to think somebody somewhere's got to win yeah yeah and horse racing i mean again uh i don't know how, how do people think about you know betting on on horses um it's it can be fun it, it's a very good day out for a lot of people yeah also quite controversial isn't it a lot of people thinking about you know the health of the horses is it a fair thing but again you know you make a good point there kk max um so yes i think another um another interesting point with this american lottery win is the tax on it because depending on where you live you may actually not have to pay any tax oh is that right Yes. Yeah, so if you, for example, if you live in states like New York or New Jersey, you can yeah. face a tax bill between five and 10 percent. However, okay. if you live in states like Texas or California, you're not taxed at all. Oh, wow. Um... Amelia, yes, I have won some money. Um, not the fortune. I've never won a jackpot, but I win the odd 20 pounds or, you know, maybe a 50 pounds. So. I guess that kind of keeps me motivated to to having a go. But like I said, I'm not addicted to it. It's just it's a bit of fun. Well, I think that's absolutely absolutely right. So, shall we tell them how much? This... Let's have a look. Yeah, let's reveal the answers here. So the question was, how much is this year's lottery? Um, wow, whopping, whopping, meaning huge, a whopping. 1.9 billion dollar jackpot i mean that's a huge amount and it's but it's only the fourth largest in the game's history so it's not even the biggest yeah yeah and i think it it, it actually increased since we we looked at this because this is very hot so <laughs> it's just amazing but the fact is you can actually choose whether you, you take a lump sum you take it all together or you have annuities you get it every year so I'm, it's i don't know if it is tax free that's a really important point so that's why you know you get a you can get a federal tax of up to 24 mm percent -hmm. so you definitely need some uh, money advisor to, to to tell you how to manage it um i don't know would you take the whole lot in one go or would you have it over 25 years or something like that well, it's interesting want. because there's a game in the uk called set for life where instead of if you play that game they don't have huge jackpots that you win a lump sum they pay you ten thousand pounds a month um and perhaps it's a more logical way of managing the managing the money yes, yes i think i'd be very happy with that <laughs> i wouldn't say no <laughs> um so yes so maybe somebody has struck it rich and that's a lovely expression we use in english to strike it rich means to acquire a great deal of money an awful lot of money typically in a sudden or unexpected way and we often talk in english about you know people going 
to the gold mines in in Australia to strike it rich or oil to strike it rich to suddenly find some oil and then you would become very very rich but in order to become rich in order to strike it rich you have to match the numbers so if things match remember they are the same so what i'm trying to do with the lottery is match my numbers with the winning numbers which you're not doing terribly successfully at not the very successfully yet but yet. not <laughs> and we talked about the you know winning the jackpot if you win the jackpot then you win the biggest the largest prize in in a competition or game so if you do if you do play the lottery or whatever or you go i just hope you win the jackpot one day that's the end of our news talk today. What great, uh, what great topics. Really, really different. Hopefully something there to interest all of you. Yeah, fingers crossed, Simon. I mean, David, I don't know if he's going to join us with our, with our lottery. Um, but yes, fingers crossed. It's a nice expression, isn't it? It is. It is lovely. Yes. Thank you, Amelia. I hope I do too, but I will still be teaching it perfectly spoken, even if I do. And you know what? We often talk about, you know, you don't win, you don't win money. You can be lucky in love instead. And sometimes that's so much better. Anyway, exactly. thanks, for, thanks for joining us. And thanks. Hope to see you next week. Absolutely, everybody. Um, we'll see you mm. next week with another three different stories. We don't know what they are. They'll be hot off the press. So please do join us same time next week. Bye bye. <laughs>